going to share something with y'all. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife for saying completely different ball game. I'll walk away from here, and this has been like a therapy session. This is Joe P for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast here in a very cold Leeds. Last show of the year. Eddie, how are we? I'm doing good, mate. I'm buzzing for Saturday. I mean, it's a wild one. Joe, it's uh, you know 2 p.m. till 7 p.m. Undercard action. England, France in the arena. And then, of course, the main card with Felix Cash, Ebony Bridges in an unbelievable fight. Josh Warrington has got a brilliant fight, a really tough fight on Saturday. Atmosphere is going to be wild. Fingers crossed for all the, the lads and girls and, of course, England. I'm going full kit wanker on Saturday, 100% in the England shirt and maybe even shin pads the lot. Um, I can't wait. It's going to be a brilliant sporting day. What are we doing, a retro or are we doing the modern? Yeah, retro or maybe a training kit or something. I don't know. I don't look great in a tracksuit, mate, but you've got to get involved. Gazza haircut? No, nah, leave it out. <laughs> Gazza right. belly. That's about Gazza it. belly. Gazza drinks will yeah. be all around the arena. Right, main event. Lopez, a lot of people in boxing are picking Lopez. I heard you say in America, a lot of people who he's, he's based in America kind of are picking Lopez heavily. Mm. What chance do you give Josh in this fight? Well, I mean, we should be talking about what chance do we give Lopez, yeah. but this is how good Lopez is. I feel a bit for Josh because to the maybe to the Leeds faithful or to the casual fan, everyone just says, oh, Luis Lopez, not really heard of him. Everybody in boxing, everybody in the States, top rank, of course, know that this kid is one of the best featherweights in the world. This is a brilliant elite featherweight matchup. A really tough fight for Josh Warrington. Lopez can punch, he can move, he's skillful, he's full of energy and beans. I don't think he's going to be overawed by this atmosphere on Saturday. And this is a tough fight for Josh. What's coming at the end of it? A possible fight with, with Lee Wood, you know, an American fight as well. He's just got to get through Saturday. It's going to be a very tough fight. And then co-main event. Ebony Bridges versus Shannon O'Connell. First of all, why didn't this one happen in Australia? Because I know you're venturing out there. You had, you've had your first show out there. Why is it taking your place in Leeds instead? Just because of the size of Ebony Bridges in terms of her profile here. You know, and her popularity here and obviously in Leeds. She's based here. It was important to get a really home advantage for this fight, not have to travel for this fight. It uh, would have been a big fight in Australia, but it would be live on TV in Australia. It's a really good fight. You know, tremendous rivalry between the pair of them. Neither fighter takes a step back. It's going to be an absolute war, and uh, it's going to be a great atmosphere for that one as well. Good to get Felix Cash out before yes. a big fight against Ammo Williams next year. Yeah, Ammo will be here. Uh, he arrives tomorrow. It's going to be lively. I mean, you know, Ammo's full of energy. He's very excited. These are two world-class middleweights. Obviously, UK against America, world championship eliminator. Let's see Felix get the win on Saturday, and let's build up to a tremendous fight between two great young prospects. Ammo's obviously coming over here, you say, tomorrow. Do you think that fight will take place in the UK or the I US? Do, actually. No, I think we'll do it in the UK, but Ammo's up for it wherever, you know, and... Um, I think Felix Cash has proved himself. You know, don't forget, he demolished Denzel Bentley, and Denzel Bentley put up a great performance against Yanni Beck recently. Felix Cash is a world-class fighter. Um, he wants to get his shot at the world title in 2023. That'll be a world title eliminator. And Ammo Williams is ready to, to walk through whatever he needs to to get his opportunity. So that's a really good fight, and I think we'll get an interesting build-up on Saturday. Could that fight headline its own card in the UK? Possibly, possibly. I mean, we'll see what happens on Saturday. You know, these fights, sometimes you get a fight between two unbeaten middleweight prospects who are approaching world championship level, and there's great rivalry. And I think Ammo's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to enjoy him. You're going to enjoy interviewing him on Saturday, and you're going to enjoy seeing him probably jump in the ring and, and stir up a big fight. I want to talk about last week I feel like the boxing world was just popping off everyone was having a go at each other left right and centre I know Colm what your initial reaction to Fury Chisora but have you had a chance to watch it in its entirety now? Not really no I mean it was you know it was samey wasn't it from rounds two and three onwards but you know people give the fight a lot of criticism and stick Chisora is a world class heavyweight but Tyson Fury is an elite heavyweight he's a very good heavyweight there's only three or four fighters that can match him really in the world and obviously Derek's not one of them um, it was pretty obvious that it was going to play out like that but obviously we always hoped that Derek would have a chance in the fight um, you know we support him 100% he's a, a great man he's got a huge heart he just wasn't good enough and, and that's that's sport he's now come out and said he wants to carry on 
You've said you're not sure if you'd want to work with him again. Have you spoke to DeZone about his killed comments last week in the build-up? Oh, I don't think they'll be wanting to work with him again. <laughs> but I don't know. No, jokes aside, I think... Um, yeah, look, Derek's been a tremendous servant of British boxing. He's the, one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. He's got one of the biggest hearts you could ever imagine. Um, and everyone just wants him to be happy um, and safe and, and healthy. I think he's had a great run. The problem is with Derek, he doesn't want to drop down a level. He just wants to be in big fights. And those big fights become dangerous as you reach that stage in his career. So it's all very well beating certain guys, but he wants to fight Wilder. He wants to fight Hergovic. He wants to fight these guys. And they're, they're dangerous fights for him. And what we saw on Saturday is you know, when you come off a Pulev win, you're a bit gung-ho. You know, we just beat Pulev, etc. And, and then you see that on Saturday and you go, maybe it's time. But that's not for me to decide. That's for Derek Chisora to decide. Your light's going a bit dodgy. Um, is it your light or that? No, oh, it? That's your light, said Eddie. You Eddie, that's yours. I'll let you off. And um, you know, whatever he decides will be behind him 100. percent I would, I do think it's a good time for him to step away from boxing. But he's his own man, and he deserves to make his own decisions. Last one on that one. Would you ask surprised how packed it was at Tottenham? Yeah, I think they sold what 40,000. I think they had 50,000 in there. Tyson Fury's a big star, you know, and um, he's a big draw. Um, Derek Chisora is very well known and um, it's good good news for boxing you know I know it's hard to fill it up especially in December but they had a good go and did good numbers Moving on Lawrence Acoli's now been ordered to fight David Light it looks like if a deal can't be made it will go to purse bids will you be going in for that fight in purse bids? Oh, I feel a bit for Lawrence you know because he's had two fights now out of three against mandatories and you know first one was Prasevich who was a, a joke and this one's against David Light, who, you know, obviously people haven't heard of. So um, we'll have to see. You know, I spoke to Lawrence the other day. We had a good chat. Um, obviously, our opinions differ. But this fight's been called and he'll, you know, he'll want to get that fight sorted. I think Matt Rose and George Rose, who actually represent David Light, are here this week. And, and we'll see um, what's going to be discussed. Would you say things more amicable between the two of you now? I think we disagree. You know, I, I think Lawrence... Now, if you ask Lawrence about the job that Matram have done for him, I think he'll say it was an, it's an, been an unbelievable job. Someone's come in, interfered with his contract and obviously offered him some numbers that he obviously wants to take. Um, so we'll see. We believe in our contractual position. It might be irrelevant in the grand scheme of things. Not going to lose any sleep over it. But what I won't have is some of the things that he said. And I think he... You know, whether he apologises for them, I don't know. But I don't think he meant it. I think he knows we've done a great job and I think he's just been frustrated and obviously wants to get back in the ring. Just picking up on some comments you made at the end of fight week last week with Colm, you said that top rank is done in America. Was that just reactionary to Bob coming at you? I get the blame when I say things. You, know, you have to understand, Bob Arum, out of nowhere, just starts taking shots at us. So I was only joking. I'd said, it, I'd said they've had a terrible year. It's been top wank, you know. And, and ultimately, you have to understand, top rank is Bob Arum, right? There is no one in that business dynamic enough to take that company forward as a face of top rank boxing. Bob Arum's 92. I have so much respect for Bob Arum. He's absolutely mental to still be in the, the, the game at this age. But you have to give him the credit for that. Um... But at the same time, they've done nothing that's impressed me. Now, someone said to me the other day, they tweeted, they went, yeah, but outside of Taylor Serrano and Canelo Bivol and Canelo Triple G and AJ Usyk, what have you actually done this year? So, like, oh, well, that ain't a bad start, is it? I mean, tell me what top rank have done this year. Tell me what shows they've put on of that magnitude in the US. Right? Hopefully they'll ha Haney Loma next year. Next year. Well done. Right, so... They're, all, they're in small arenas. They go to Virgin Resorts World and, and uh, the somewhere else. Yeah, Virgin and Resort in Vegas. They've got no ambition. Bob Arum has got no ambition in boxing anymore. He's looking to make money and get out. Right? We're both at very different stages of our company and our mindset. We have a global vision for the sport. And in America, we're doing tremendously well. We just had 9,000 for Chocolatito Estrada last week. You know, I mean, they haven't even sold out Tiafimo Lopez against Sandor Martin. And the, the event the week after that is up in Turning Stone, FA Ejegba against Oscar Rivas. The numbers on ESPN are terrible. You know, and they're losing faith with, with top rank because they lack ambition. 
because Bob Arum is 92. But I'm not starting this. He come out and started having a pop at me. So don't blame me for defending myself. So you want to end it then? I don't want to end it. He's just Bob. Look, I love the top ranked people. But when Bob speaks, sometimes he's absolutely off his chops on, as I said, on edibles or whatever it is. It is. But he just he's wild. And he comes out with his stuff out of nowhere. But I, I have to respect Bob Aaron because he's 92 years old. He's been around, like, he's a legend of promotion. But the game is, like, the game's different. And we're young and we're ambitious and we're just getting started. Just want to, uh, your thoughts on Javante Davis, the email that kind of he uh, brought out for 10 million. Then he said that you allow trying to drug cheats to fight. I thought you had a working relationship with Tank. It was very weird. I mean, you know, he accused Ryan Garcia of being on peds when he saw him in a T-shirt and then started bringing me into it. You know, I've been talking to Javante over the last couple of weeks. Uh, he asked us for an offer. We made him an offer. Obviously, sp- spoke to Eric Gomez about that offer and made him aware of what we were going to do. Um, what else? Obviously, he's left Leonard Ellaby. Um, it was an interesting move. And, yeah, made him a great offer. 10 million minimum with big pay-per-view upside. Thought it was a good offer. But apparently he's making a hell of a lot more for the Tank fight. So, for the uh, Ryan Garcia fight. So, good luck to him. Uh, Last one. March 11th. uh, Liverpool. Lyndon Arthur taking on Callum Smith. Uh, We'd like to make that fight. You know, obviously... You know, Cal has got his own broadcast deal. And, you know, we're willing to, to make a an interesting offer to make that fight happen. I think it's a great fight, Liverpool against Manchester, but it's down to Caller and Linden and Pat, and we'll see. You did say, kind of, you wouldn't make that uh, Boatsy fight for Smith. What's the difference between... Oh, you said it's unlikely with the position. I said I'd love to make that fight. I said, but it's a very expensive fight with both guys looking to land their shot at a world title and conversations going on for both to get it. Um, I think Linden Arthur... He's out of the race for a world title at the moment and might be willing to roll the dice and believe he can beat Callum Smith. So we'll see. I'd love to make any of those fights against any of those guys, but we'll see what happens. Eddie, thank you very much. Catch up with you the way in tomorrow. Cheers. I'm going to share something with you. That might put me in a very negative light, yeah. Relationships are not my forte. You see if someone grabbed up my wife and saying, completely different ballgame. I'll walk away from here and this has been like a therapy session.